Look, I know it's September 8th, and by now some people thought we might have a Nintendo Direct. That doesn't seem to be the case, at least not this week. We do have a PlayStation presentation tomorrow, which we'll see if I live stream that or not. I haven't decided, but uh, either way, there should be a lot of good news uh, to come out of that. And we'll probably bring some of it up on the Nintendo Prime podcast tomorrow. Uh, we've actually pushed it a day uh, due to some scheduling issues with some other stuff uh, behind the scenes. However, uh, we do have a lot of other stuff we can be talking about, including something that might appear in a Nintendo Direct someday, although... Probably not for a little while. Uh, we have a few big stories here for you guys. Uh, one of them might actually be in the upcoming Direct. The potential of a certain uh, major third-party character uh, that used to be a mascot for a certain platform being the character being added to Smash Bros. And why there might be a hint at that, but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, we also have to talk about the Switch OLED, this platform up here, and why it's going to be extremely difficult potentially to get this platform at all uh, until 2023. In fact, this also applies to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and all the shortages that has had. And beyond all that, we have a major, major Nintendo IP, a long-standing IP with a new entry, seemingly quote-unquote confirmed uh, to be coming after we thought maybe they were done with this IP. It seems like it's coming back in a big way, and we're going to hear about it at some point next year. Again, probably not this direct, but some point next year. And, oh boy, I'm actually, that's like the primary reason I wanted to make this video. Uh, but before we get into those three stories, i got to remind you, this platform up here, that Switch OLED, that white Switch OLED, we're actually giving one away right now. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel to enter. We also potentially have more Switch OLEDs that we're giving away i will put a link to our uh, a last video that i did where every 100,000 views it gets we give away an additional uh nintendo switch oled along with 50 dollars to charity uh so that should be a lot of fun we'll have to see uh, how that video shakes out but let's get right into all of this goodness So our first story is a very simple one. It's very speculative based on something that's actually happening. So a lot of content creators, influencers, media, streamers uh, are getting a certain fruit <laughs> in the mail. Uh, they're getting a Wumpa fruit from the Crash Bandicoot series, and they're getting that Wumpa fruit in the form of a pinata. Now, I don't have the exact details of what they're supposed to be doing with that pinata. Are they supposed to break it on a certain day? We have no idea if there's anything even in it, if it's just representative. Uh, but what we do know is that Activision tends to send out um, crash-related items to media shortly before uh, a major crash announcement is going to happen. And what's interesting is, with Crash Bandicoot in particular, is its developer, Toys for Bob, is done. Um, they have had a lot of layoffs this year uh, and have announced publicly that while they will continue to support Crash Bandicoot 4, uh, that most of their efforts are being put now into being a support studio for Call of Duty Warzone. So it kind of felt like they were done with Crash. But then this happened, and it's got people wondering, is this potentially something that was teased in a commercial for the Uncharted franchise where Crash Bandicoot players were playing Uncharted? What could that be? Well, it could be Wumpa League, because Wumpa League was on a poster in the background of that commercial, and sometimes Crash games are teased in this way. Now, it could have just been a reference uh, to something else, or just talking about how they're playing a competitive league of Uncharted against each other for some reason. I have no idea. Um, it is a game that's been rumored to maybe exist for a while, but given that Toys for Bob is pretty much done with the franchise, so we believe, uh, it kind of means that even if that game did exist, it probably doesn't exist anymore. And this is what led to the further explanation that, well, what else could Crash be happening now? There could be a collection coming out, of course. There's been a rumored collection for a while that has the Insane Trilogy 4 and Crash Bandicoot Racing you know, all together in one package. It could be for something like that. We're trying to provide you all of the more likely potential scenarios before we get into what really is making us talk about it here. Because, yeah, we got all these Crash games on Switch, so that's obviously Switch related anyways. But what if... This is actually a tease for Crash Bandicoot being announced as the final 
DLC character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Obviously, Crash is now on Nintendo platforms. It's free of being a Sony exclusive, and it would be really, really cool for old school Sony fans, especially to see one of their favorite characters from their childhood represented in Smash Bros. And we all know Smash likes to pay homage to classic games, and hey, it's actually kind of modern still, too. So I know. We don't really know if that's what this means. I, I laid out other possibilities, and all of those possibilities are good possibilities, but it also might be a new character in Smash. Now, you might say, but Sakurai won't. This is what happens with Crash. He's teased in this way by Activision all the time, so we'll just have to wait and see uh, what comes of this. Either way, something Crash-related is being announced soon. Maybe it's tomorrow at Sony's thing. Maybe it's at a Nintendo Direct. Maybe it's something they're going to be dropping on Twitter later. I have no idea. We'll just have to wait and see. There was actually a tweet uh, that went out as well that seemed to be teasing something for Crash uh, by the official Crash Bandicoot Twitter account, but didn't really explain what it is. Uh, we also do, it is like the 25th anniversary of Crash Bandicoot as well. So again, lots of possibilities. All I know is something Crash related is coming, and maybe it's a Smash. Maybe it's the Wumpa League. Maybe it's a collection pack. Maybe Crash 5 is getting announced out of nowhere by a different developer. I have no idea. We'll just have to wait and see. So next up, we have the Switch OLED up here. I mentioned that it might be hard to get through 2023, and there's been a lot of signs pointing to this, uh, but we haven't really talked about it because most of us assume by the time we got to 2022, or at least halfway through 2022, stock for video game systems would start to normalize, meaning we could walk into a store and buy a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, or a Nintendo Switch slash Switch OLED, anytime we want and at the time of recording you can actually buy a base model version 2 red box nintendo switch right now on amazon at least in the u.s so it's not sold out at the moment online but my local stores don't have anything every now and then you'll see a few switch lights but every time they get a full stock and we're talking like a hundred systems of switch and i live in the middle of nowhere wisconsin they're gone within 24 hours. So it's in very, very high demand, and that's obviously going to only worsen as big games like Metroid Dread come out. Obviously, the Switch OLED releases. We get Pokemon out. We get Mario Party out. Pokemon Legends Arceus next year. Splatoon 3, holiday season. There's a whole lot of crazy stuff coming up that was going to cause shortages in a normal you know, non-COVID-related year, and yet here we are dealing with the fact that these shortages might not be going anywhere for a long time. So... First off, we have automotive makers, uh, such as the makers behind BMW, coming out publicly and saying that um, based on what they're hearing from their chip manufacturer makers, they're not really going to be able to ramp up production more than what they're doing now until 2023 when those chip makers end up opening up an extra factory. And it takes years to build and open up a new factory. So, yeah, um, automotive makers are literally planning on not being able to meet demand until 2023. Beyond all of this, there are actually a lot of industry execs within the gaming industry uh, and other um, you know, phone ind industry and other technologies related to video games um, that have said, even as some of the world is getting back to normal lives, places like Malaysia are actually seeing such a spike in COVID cases uh, right now that factories are no longer running at maximum capacity. Uh, and Malaysia is a very key stepping stone in the manufacturing process for things like the Tegra X1 used in the Switch, things like the processors used in the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. And they already were having shortages running at 100%. Now imagine they're running at half of their current capacity due to COVID. Yeah, let's just say that's not good. That's not good at all, and that's not what we want to hear heading into the launch of a new version of Switch. We're not going to say a new platform, but a new version of Switch, and obviously heading into the holiday season. That is not good news. I wish it was, but it's not. And it sounds like until we're obviously fully out of the pandemic and fully you know, have a whole new factory open in another area that maybe is suffering less from COVID, it's, it's going to be a while before current-gen platforms are readily available. So we already seen a lot of games get delayed. Now we're seeing console manufacturing get affected as well. Uh, so this is, it's going to be a rough go of it. If you want a PlayStation 5 and you want to be able to walk into a store and readily buy it, good luck. Same with the Switch OLED. Same with the Xbox Series X. Good luck. You might get lucky, and maybe there are some areas in the world where it's not hard. Um, they are opening pre-orders for Switch OLED in Japan on 924. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's going to be a crap show. We're giving one away. I'm going to give away as many of them as I possibly can based on that other video I mentioned at the very beginning. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Now, 
This next story is, oh, we've been waiting all, all video to get to this, right? Um, as much as it sucks that we're going to have a hard time getting that, you know what is likely coming back? A game that Mr. Miyamoto talked about five years ago. Know what I'm referencing yet? No? That's okay. I'm about to tell you. Five years ago, Shigeru Miyamoto infamously said, Pikmin 4 was nearly complete. And here we are, five, heading on into six years of not having that nearly complete game. Now, some people thought, well, maybe it was Hey Pikmin. Maybe Hey Pikmin that came on the 3DS. That's what he was talking about. But Miyamoto actually clarified at one point in an interview that the upcoming Hey Pikmin game was not the game he was referencing. So what the hell is going on? Where's Pikmin 4? Pikmin 3 Deluxe got ported over to Switch, and it's the best-selling Pikmin game of all time. It felt like now is the time for Pikmin 4. But we haven't heard about it. It's not here. That's what we thought anyways. So, a person on Twitter who I've never referenced before, uh, but the reason we're referencing is because of Emily Rogers. Um, but we're talking about at NWPlayer123, uh, put out on Twitter, because there was been some posts going around about the anniversary of when Pikmin 4 was actually announced, because it was announced on a September 7th, uh, five years ago. Uh, and it said Pikmin 4 development, she claims, got rebooted in 2019, so we'll probably see it come sometime late next year, given how much COVID has slowed things down. She says the question is, will it launch before or after Mario Kart 9? My bet's on a couple months before. So she seems to be also inferring, by the way, Mario Kart 9 is coming next year. This is one of the first times you've actually seen a potential insider reference that. But what here's the interesting. Emily Rogers, who is one of the most well-known Nintendo insiders, literally in the history of Nintendo Insider Leaks, who's been right on so much stuff, but barely talks about things anymore because uh, she's moved on to other interests in her life. Uh, but she responded to NW Player 123 and said, Pikmin 3's development also went through a long experimental phase. It was rebooted multiple times across multiple platforms. DS, Wii, Wii U. Miyamoto was likely misinterpreted saying Pikmin 4 was near complete. Maybe he meant preliminary planning and conceptual work was almost done. So what she's kind of suggesting is the idealization of Pikmin 4 was nearly complete, but the game wasn't, and the game's probably been on multiple different platforms, likely 3DS, Wii U, etc., and now Switch, and had a full reboot in 2019 um, to make sure it's going to come to the Switch platform, which is pretty much what happened with Pikmin 3. Pikmin 3 went through a similar development phase. Now, what's even more interesting about this, though, isn't just that we obviously are getting some confirmation that Pikmin 4 still exists and is still a thing Nintendo's bringing out, which, again, with the sales success of Pikmin 3 Deluxe, it makes a lot of sense that they're still going to bring out Pikmin 4. But here's the thing. A, a random person named Darachi over on Reset Era put together some dream scenario for Pikmin 4. And Imran Khan of Fanbyte, formerly of Game Informer, who's been correct on a whole bunch of crap, basically said that this is true. Like this fan dream that you threw out there, this is what's happening in Pikmin 4. So let's read what Darachi said. Pikmin 4 started the development near the end of Pikmin 3, but didn't pass Miyamoto's weird, it's not doing something new slash unique threshold. So it went back to the drawing board. Miyamoto, having seen it in action through prompted his infamous It's Nearing Completion comment in 2015 or so. By the time it was back on the rails, they realized the Wii U, a gimmick of which was probably integral to Pikmin 4's gameplay at the time, was coming to an abrupt end, and all development was being shifted to the Switch. This dictated another revisit to the drawing board, this time seeing the two Joy-Cons, and finally realizing Pikmin should go co-op. In the meantime, they got uh, right together putting Pikmin 3 Deluxe with a new co-op mode to test the waters for both Pikmin as a brand and Pikmin in a cooperative context. It being the best-selling Pikmin game to date means their co-op direction for 4 got the green light. And then, okay, cool. That's what Jirachi said. Now, Jirachi claims to be an insider, but again, I'm just going to say random because I don't, I, I couldn't verify any of Jirachi's stuff. But here's the thing. Imran Khan, I can verify. Imran Khan, I've actually worked with in the past. And he said... Throw in some, and he responded to this comment and said, You throw in some engine problems and changes, and what is being said here isn't far off. So basically, they've had some issue with the engines and had to make some changes behind the scenes since the reboot in 2019. But 
it's going to focus hard on co-op. It, by the way, it doesn't mean it won't be playable in single-player games. Having co-op is not the same as games requiring co-op. So for those of you that enjoy Pikmin single-player, let's not just presume Pikmin 4 won't have a single-player aspect to it. It's just it's likely going to be built around co-op with a Pikmin. You know, kind of like Triforce Heroes is meant for you know three-player cooperative play, but obviously can be played by one person. I always think this is probably going to be something like that, uh, maybe to a lesser degree since co-op is just two players and not four. But still, this is a really, really big news of one, Pikmin 4 was greenlit again. Two, Pikmin 4 is still in development. And three, Pikmin 4 is getting to the point that we might even see the game come out in late 2022, if not an early 2023 game. This is exciting news for me because I love Pikmin and my fiance loves Pikmin. Here's like her favorite games on Nintendo are basically any sort of side-scrolling Mario game, any sort of side-scrolling Donkey Kong game, Animal Crossing New Horizons, she loves that game, and Pikmin 3. She fell in love with Pikmin 3 back on the Wii U. Like, she loves Pikmin. So this is exciting just for me to have another game come out that I know my fiance is going to be all over. And it being co-op, can you say uh, Nintendo Prime co-op streams with Mr. and Mrs. Prime? <sighs> oh yeah, baby. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm super excited for this game to semi get confirmed. It's not by Nintendo, so we can call it a rumor. Call it speculation if you want. But Emily Rogers and Imran Khan are two people that are just dead on with almost everything they say. And then obviously uh, we have a couple other new faces to the market in Jirachi and NW Player 123 chiming in as well uh, and really got the ball rolling on all of this so this is all exciting to me pikmin 4 yes yes freaking yes but we'll have to wait and see what's really cool about pikmin as well is it's always a game that's actually known as a really visually um intense sort of game because it uses like realistic landscapes um with these goofy pikmin characters and i it, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to see what they can really do with the Switch with a game built from the ground up for the Switch. And what engine they decided to go with. Is it Unreal Engine 4? Is it some internal Nintendo engine? Did they use Unity? I have no idea. There's a whole bunch of options on the table. We'll have to wait and see what they went with. But I am really excited for the future of this franchise. And I'm so glad to at least hear rumors about it. Because you know what? Where there's smoke, there's usually fire. And rumors are the kind of smoke for the fire that I'm hoping exists in Pikmin 4. All right, folks, I am Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.